We want to be part of part of that community. And then with whatever they provide, they, they build value. So today it's more on being uh, focused and intentional rather than how it was before. Yeah, and yes. let's come down the line here. Oh yeah, skip over here. Yeah, so awesome answer. That was that was cool to hear, Calvin. Um, I'll I'll take that as two different kinds of brands. I'll answer uh, the native Web two or Web three, and I'll take the Web two to, to Web three. Um, we've worked with some of both. I think the way the 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 Web two brands or traditional consumer brands looked at the space last year, you saw just like looking for headlines, like hey, we were the first to do this. We did a digital this, and we got it out there, and it was like. We're cool, and they they're they're gone. They've completely disappeared since then, and it's fine. They're just you know playing around, doing activations, trying to see what what happens. Um, one of the ones we worked with last year that was different than that was Coke. Um, we did a, a the NFT loot box with them in in July last year. It was an auction to to benefit Special Olympics. It sold in in like extended auction time for like six hundred thousand dollars. But a brand like Coke. Had, has this like longer term mindset of being engaged with consumers where they're at and understanding culture and being a driver. And so their commitment to stay engaged in the space is, is on rails. They're committed to learning and being part of things and being humble and, and uh, staying committed to the space. And I love that. We turn down brands that seem to have like what you're saying, this like attention grabbing selfish interest. Uh, on the other side, I would say uh, Artifact as being a, you know, a Web2 native brand um, I don't think their vision has changed at all. I think they're continuing, the ones that are still here, Yuga, Artifact, other, other big brands, they're just continuing to execute that vision that they had as, as innovators in the space. So I think those guys are on rails. Uh, Nike acquiring Artifact didn't change any of that. Nike just adds punch, it adds power for them to do this crossover, this blurring of physical and digital. Uh, if you haven't seen what they're doing, check it out because they're forging, they're just taking the barriers down between physical and digital where the product exists in both spheres and it can, you know, it can exist independently, uh, yeah, but it's meant to, to, to work together. So I think that those natives that are still here are just are executing the vision they've always had. It's exciting to, to kind of see the perspective from both. Yeah, it's, it's, sort of, um, it's funny, you, you talked about how in 2021 there were so many uh, projects talking about the first this and the first that. I think that we would analyze uh, all the projects that minted out but are no longer really around anymore and see how many had first, I think we'd see like almost all, all of them. And Preston, do you have any color to add to that? Uh, no, those, those were uh, maybe just a couple things. Uh, those were some great answers. Uh, just a couple other quick observations, um, just like 10 seconds of stuff. Uh, 2021, I would say a lot of the big brands and IP that we all know and love uh, a lot of it was like education for them. So they were doing like we were doing like 101 classes. We were doing test and learns. Uh, even though they wanted a long, uh, you know, even like Coke wanted like a multi-year activation. It was still like, hey, let's what's the MVP and let's like get our uh, dip our toe in the water. Now um, we talk to the big brands. They're either working with special agencies that are like you know focused on Web3 or they're setting up. Uh, like Web3 departments themselves. We were just on with like Champion, Haynes Brands. Um, they're super innovative and they were like, hey, we're gonna hire in for Web3. Or like big companies like MasterCard, um, they're like trying to poach our developers. We're like, we're hiring 1,500 people for Web3. Like they poached one, it was really good. But like, he was a really good developer. Um, but like things like that, now you have big companies, uh, whether it's like Warner Brothers, who we talk with all the time about some very cool stuff. Uh, we did Batman with them, but we talked with uh, seven of their Web3 NFT team. So that's kind of interesting, which we just saw in the last few months, the big brands acknowledging that, you know, the customers are going to Web3 and, and hiring for those teams. Yeah, that's that's really cool to hear. And something that it was, you know, someone who's been in the space for a long time that um, it's really exciting to hear that you're working with such cool brands and they're having that sort of sentiment and entering the space. Um, so speaking of use cases, and you all touched on a few of them, um, and maybe we can expand or touch on some other ones, but a lot of us have been looking for, you know, when we think of mainstream adoption, what is that Angry Birds, you know, killer app use case? And so my question for you all is, have we seen that use case so far? Or like, what use case do you think that is? And a, and a second part of that is, are there any brands that we should be, that we should be watching along these lines? My short answer is um, you, you hear utility a lot, right? That's a, that's a native word to the NFT space. You don't ask like McDonald's what the utility is of like, you know it, you understand the value already. 
this space as it matures talks less about utility and talks more just about value and experience. And I, I think that's a, I think that's an important kind of maturing process that's happening in the space right now. If I point to somebody that's doing that, it's Nike and and Artifact by by answering that question and not making it you know something vague where you're like, what's the utility of this? You just know in a way that's familiar uh, because you have experience that with other mainstream brands. It's true. So he just hit on a, a point that I also wanted to kind of extend. Um, yeah, I think the next mainstream obviously is going to be the fashion industry, and I, I believe that Artifact. It's cool that you guys are, are working with Artifact Clonex. That's amazing. I just minted like. Uh, I have a clone X that has a Murakami like cap on, he's an octopus, whatever, and I minted like two pairs of socks, two t-shirts, a hoodie, a uh, couple pairs of Nike shoes, and it's crazy, and I'm excited to see what I'm gonna do with those in the future, but I really think that uh, moving forward, big brands that can match what we buy in real life to what we can have in the metaverse are gonna, are gonna kill it. If I go into the Gucci store and I buy a Gucci hoodie, I was talking to, to my friend back uh, in the, somewhere in here right now who has the, the, the number one pudgy penguin. He was talking about Gucci. And um, I was saying, when I walk into the Gucci store and whatever I buy in there, if they can match an NFT of what I buy in real life to what I can wear in the metaverse, that's it. That would make me buy even more. That would be pretty cool. Also, in, in the fashion um, industry, I believe that obviously shoes will take, will take the cake. I mean, when we think of everything we wear, the most important part for women, for men, are our shoes. And we have so many different pairs of them and we're focused on that next new pair we're gonna get. Um, how the shoe industry um, reacts to the NFT space and what they do with it will be really important. Like I have all these ideas in my creative mind about what these companies can do and it's cool the connections guys like the guys sitting right here have. You said your friend was one, a big exec with the shoe. What company was it? Uh, oh, John, uh, John Sand. Yeah. Uh, uh, John Stan's a fashion designer. Uh, Tommy Chen is a shoe designer. Okay. They're all connected with Artifact. They're all building. They're all helping each other build. That's yeah. It's, it's, so it's just like so this these guys are like you know explode. You know, I'm think I'm, I'm I'm imagining like these brands creating uh you know this the you know Nike. They have all their shoes that you're able to mint. Okay. And really you're able to mint them. You can hold your collection instead of in your closet. You hold them in your wallet. But uh, every time you want to get them in real life, you got to burn the token, okay? And you get them in real life. Or if you want them in the metaverse, um, you got to burn the token too, okay? And the idea that I think they should use is, because if you want the market to continue to come back and buy and buy, is that when you get them in the real life, your shoes are only going to last a certain amount of time, right? I'm always trying to clean my shoes every time I wear them or before I put them back in these sneaker heads, know that. But um, they're, they're only going to have a certain lifespan. In the metaverse, it should be the same. When I burn my token to get those shoes to be able to wear in front of everybody in the metaverse, there should be a timeline on that before they wear out and they burn, so I have to buy another pair. Like, I think the fashion industry is gonna blow it up. Same with anything else you buy. There, there's so many things you can think of. No, I, I might be doing something wrong, sorry. No, um, yeah, no, I mean, there's so many interesting things that we still have to work out as like we get to you know wherever that metaverse ends up in some great date in the future, but you touched on a lot of really interesting things that leads to kind of a, a, a question that was more geared towards the, the folks at Taffy, but please jump in if you have some thoughts as well, Calvin, and that's around, you, you play in a couple, of a couple of emerging spaces, right? So not just NFTs, and I know it's a lot more than just this, but like NFTs, and you also play in um, avatars as a digital identity, right? And so when you talk about wearables and your identity in the metaverse, all that goes into it. And I'm curious if you have some thoughts on what is more primed for like, mainstream adoption or acceptance? Um, okay, I'll, I'll say this and Preston jump in. And I'll disagree with whatever Matt says. <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll, we'll this is what we do like 10 hours a day. We, we argue like 10 hours, what is that? Um, yeah, this notion of digital identity is something we started really exploring back in like 2017, like in earnest. And um, I think COVID just poured gas on, on this as people had to work from home and couldn't socialize in person anymore. Um, and that's the idea that the, your online interactions with people, your online identity uh, is, has as much like social currency as your, your real life, your IRL interactions because you didn't see people as much. And you know, that Gucci bag uh, that is part of your identity, that's part of your, you know, like, your, your style doesn't come through on a Zoom call. It just doesn't have a place there. So having other ways to, to have that style and have a little bit of like personality, those things come through digitally. So there has to be a supporting ecosystem of brands and there has to be acceptance of that where 
we show up on all our Zoom calls and Google Meet calls wearing our Murakami artifact clothes. We have snap filters. Or snap my doodles, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have the doodles, and like, we do this, and it's like, for the first 10 minutes, it's just fun. We're a bunch of adults messing around with like, cartoon faces. But it's, um, it's part of, it, like, if you're under the age of 20, this is what you've done with Minecraft and Fortnite. It's, this is just like how they live. And it's just kind of creeping up in age to the rest of us to, 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 have, us, to have those experiences virtually where it, I think COVID just accelerated this like crazy. And uh, so it's exciting to be, to be a part of it. Yeah, uh, and just, to, just to add to that, I mean, a little, little anecdote, right? Like Matt and I show up with like our bankers and like Wall Street folks and the investors. And we're like, we're in our like, you know, we're a commie or we're in our board age just like, fucking around, right? Like, and they're like, what, what the fuck is this? And it's like, you know, the, but, but the reality is like, the, like those are our identities online. Those are our avatars. Um, that's how we represent ourselves. We're, we're fully docs for a company that's been around for 20 years, but like the, the digital identity, the avatars, um, if you're part of like uh, the 13 to 15 year old crowd, like there's 200 million uh, monthly active users of Roblox and they use, you know, avatars and we provide avatar content for that as well. If you're part of like um, like any type of online Zoom part of the you know that world, like, that's what we do. If you're an NFT holder, there's probably um, two million like uh, unique wallets of like PFP avatar owners type of thing. So like it's getting more mainstream. The NFT is definitely an emerging market. There's probably less than three million like less than three million total like NFT holders right now. I mean, give or take, but. Um, and there's like hundreds of millions of gamers that use their avatars and buy skin. So that world, I think digital avatars are already mainstream. NFTs are just gonna, you know, blow it up. It's like growing like a rocket ship, rocket ship even in the uh, bear market. I, I would argue that from a usage perspective. Yeah, and I, I'm sure we could sit here and talk about this topic for a long time. I'm, very, I'm personally very interested, but. Um, for the sake of time, I, I, I want to move on to uh, another question that I had, and then we'll let this kind of close it out, so we'll make kind of a two-part question. But all this sounds, sounds you know, super exciting to us. We're all, obviously all somewhat bought into the idea of NFTs and Web3, but not all brands are there yet, right? And I'm sure you've talked to a lot of brands where you think it's a great idea, and they're just like, uh, not yet, or for whatever reason. So maybe if we could close out, um, what is like a common reason why brands aren't jumping into the space? And what would you say to brands um, who are kind of on the fence? All right, um, man, there's so much I want to talk about today, man. We can have so much fun up here. But, we got uh, a Q&A, we got yeah, a Q&A around here. So. But uh, no, I think that a big reason why big brands aren't jumping into the space yet is because they're watching what other brands do. A lot of high level execs don't even own an NFT. They don't even know how to how to create a crypto wallet or even buy from Coinbase yet. Like a lot of people, I think it's uh, everything always comes down to, and whatever it is you're trying to get involved with is edu education and understanding. That's all it is, you know. The more they educate themselves, the more they understand how this works. From guys like these two up here who are walking into their boardrooms, educating them on why they need a Web3 team, um, the more they're going to find out, and the more they actually do it on their own, the more they're going to experience it and want it to be involved uh, in their brand. Those brands that are the trailblazers today, like Starbucks and you know Nike and these big brands, they're the ones doing all the heavy lifting for these guys who are scared to jump in. So these guys that are scared to jump in are watching these big brands with their trial and errors, with all the, the things that they're teaching their consumers. And then once they see more market adoption, um, then they're gonna wanna get involved. Like once they see other brands in the space that are doing big things, they can share that with their consumers. And then their consumers will feel like, well, I want to follow with the trend, and then they can start integrating their, their Web3 products and all those types of things. Yeah, so I'm going to date myself here uh, briefly. Uh, in the past life, I worked at Yahoo. Uh, it was the biggest advertiser on the planet at the time. Uh, you Facebook that for me? Yeah. <laughs> But my job, I was hired there to get CPG brands to spend money online. They couldn't figure out how to get Coke and Pepsi and Procter and Gamble and everybody to spend their money online. They were still doing it in print and billboard and, and other forms of traditional media because it was familiar. There was an inertia, the decades old ad buying inertia to why people advertised and connected the way they did. And so I'm gonna say the question of why aren't they doing Web3 is the question I was answering. Why weren't they doing the internet back in 2007? It's like insane. But because there's inertia built into the way bigger brands operate and the way they have their budgets and the accountability, 
I think the fact that brands coming into this space and we go from innovators, you know that old technology adoption curve, you go from innovators to early majority, some of these brands are the innovators. They're the ones who are gonna push everyone else forward and it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's not like they're encroaching on us. Those big brands mean mainstream adoption and that's a positive for the space. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll just, if it's like the C-suite at like a big brand that's like, I'm not sure, I'll just like, do you want to be Kodak or do you want to be like Meta? That's that's why they changed their name. That's kind of, so that's it. No, this is this is great. And um, I think, you know, are, are we good with that? Okay, because it, it was feeling a bit cold in here, so I put on a sweatshirt, but I, um, thankfully, I heard that we had a sizzle reel ready to go. see like everybody's avatar in here like the board apes the cool cats and all that kind of stuff I think in real life if they can marry those two things it'll it'll change the game even more yeah that's that's amazing stuff guys and I think uh, I'm sure there's lots of questions from the audience but at least there's, there's one right there how do, do we have a mic for Q&A or should I just run around yours can be pretty loud I'm pretty loud yes <laughs> Sorry for cutting up. I was just going to repeat the question, but if you want to do that here. Yeah, so I heard it. Would we, are we only interested, like us, uh, interested in big brands or emerging artists? Daz is a 20 year old company that, that's part of Taffy that supports uh, 3D artists around the world in particular. Um, we do a rev share, we paid out like 150, 200 million dollars in revenue share to artists, individual. A lot of them are amateurs or, or budding professionals and in the NFT space we've launched, one of our artists was uh, one of the first artists ever on Coinbase, it was the first PFP collection on Coinbase. It was so exciting, it sold out in like 30 seconds. So we're, we're trying very, very actively to put the artists that are in our orbit and that are interested in this space, like on Coinbase, in front of 100 million yeah. new wallets to the space. This is gonna be a huge emphasis for us next year. We're building out a whole team, taking some of our existing team that has expertise, totally dedicated to people like you to make this accessible, not just to the big brands, but for, for people who are aspiring artists or accomplished artists who wanna, wanna uh, leverage NFTs in the Web3 space. It's part of our values. We would like to bring 3D artists, creators, to uh, get them to be successful. Like our, our software is free, uh, we publish on behalf of them, like actually Coinbase, GameStop, Crypto.com have all been artist driven, uh, like emerging, emerging artist driven collections of ours. Um, so so we're, we're big on that.
or we've, we've, they've launched uh, NFT collections and we've helped bring it to the mainstream using our brand and platform. We've given them the tools. An artist called Beeple, he uses our software every day. You might have heard of him. Yeah, or Buck Render out of Vancouver. Like We have all, all the virtual influencers, a lot of them use our software and we support them. Uh, behind the scenes, so for their own brands, for their for their own brands. So we're not necessarily like we don't put our own brand on, but we we support them. We give them the tools. Uh, we give them product. We have uh, different types of licenses, and we connect them in col with collaborations of our existing tech partners. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I guess I just got to point at people. There you go. So uh, I have a Web two company, and I find it really difficult to adopt to Web3 because a lot of the big Web2 marketing platforms like Facebook and Google do not allow NFT crypto companies. So when do you think that's going to evolve? And just to hear some of your thoughts on that. Really good question. I, I think it's happening right now. Um, I think I think Meta's commitment. They you know they put I think they lost two and a half billion dollars last quarter investing in this space. That's going to turn at some point. But but uh, I heard Mark Zuckerberg say on that call they look at this as a decade long commitment for, for Meta. Um, so, I mean, it's probably gonna be years before it's frictionless. Think how much friction we all deal with having wallets and everything else that goes with it. Um, I, I think it's probably before it's like really mainstream, it's gonna be a couple of years. It's my best guess. No, I, I agree surprisingly with Matt on this one, but it is, uh, yeah, like it's, uh, it's, it's happening now, it's just like, the, the problem is, uh, and there are partners, so I don't want to disparage if someone's recording, but like the like companies like Apple, they're just starting to let it go, let, let it happen with like NFT marketing, but then they're like, we want 30%, yeah. right? Like, so it's just kind of like, it's gonna happen, it's happening, they know uh, where the fish are, you gotta you know, fish where the fish are, is like one of my, one of the guys that works with me says all the time, they know where the customers are going, they're gonna try to take their pound of flesh though. If that, I don't know if that's discouraging, I guess, so, but, or encouraging. Um, I'm um, curious just like what considerations went into choosing that, that project to own and then what you guys are excited about for the future. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll start with that. So this was uh, Fame Lady Squad was one of the OG all-female PFP collections, but it was not, it was actually a rug pull where um, the founders pretended to be women, they were actually Russian men. Um, <laughs> and then so they pretended to be, the community found out, they got livid. So actually, um, the community rose up and took over the collection. They took over the wallets. It was um, uh, Board Becky is a well-known influencer in the space. Ashley Smith, she's out of Vancouver, and then the rest of their team. They took over and they did an amazing job maintaining and growing that community. So when we looked at them, we were actually pursuing them for about a year, like right after. Uh, and some of the metrics were just like, I'll, I'll wrap it up. We're like, the community was super engaged. The mission aligned exactly with what we stand for. We're values-based um, uh, company. We're privately held, so uh, the, the all-women nature of the, the community. Uh, and some of the financial metrics, I'm a CFO too, it's like they have over 30% uh, blue chip uh, holders. They have like uh, the collaborations already with like Gary V and like people like that, Randy Zuckerberg. So on all fronts, it was like this checked every box. Does that help? Yeah. Um, what are you excited about for the future of Fame Ladies? So much stuff. I mean, uh, I did a Twitter space just a couple days ago on it, but it was like the brands that are interested in Fame Lady Squad, um, like the, the tech that we bring for those capabilities, uh, and, and just like engaging that community in and promoting it. So super excited about it. Thank you. I think we have about just a couple minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, we have some people up here that. Um, are you guys planning on implementing it into a metaverse, like specific metaverse, make you guys' own metaverse, like all those different print, uh, brands? Like, where are they all going to meet up for us to use all of them? Man, I th it's, a, it's a great question. I don't think there is one metaverse, right? So what you're touching on is this question of like interoperability. It's possible today, and and uh, the brands and those destinations all need to have like the handshakes on the technical side and just on the human side to make that portability happen. The, the technical ability is, is totally there to do it. Like the content we do that we specialize in that's 3D can go in our own, can be used in our own free 3D soft uh, free 3D software. It can also export to like Unity and Unreal and Blender and all these like creation tools. 
So technically it's there, it's the brands and the destinations to agree that they want that. They, right now they have a, a, a very web two interest like Google and Facebook and everybody wants to maintain their customers um, and it's very natural, uh, but that, those are the walls that have to like disintegrate for, for there to be like true interoperability. It's gotta be like the agreement that that's what customers want and that that's in the company's best interest. Okay, so I think we have one more, maybe, right here? Yep, hello. I think this is for you, Paul. Um, so you guys were talking about the built-in audiences that brands already have, and I'm 30 years, I'm dating myself now, 30 years in the music industry, and uh, fully, fully transformed over to the other side, and we're three, every day is amazing. Um, but what I'm finding now is I'm having a lot of legacy artists coming back to me because they have the same thing. They have this built-in fan base. And they're starting off thinking, oh, this is for kids, this is for kids, not understanding that their super fans have grown up with them, have money now, <laughs> and they have the money to spend. Do you find that, like, so for me, I see the legacy artists as, as brands themselves, right? Do you have many artists coming to you in yeah. terms of artists that have had careers and are yeah. older but have the built-in fan base? So when I when I talk when we talk about brands up here, I want you to know we're not just talking about Apple or or uh, Starbucks or Nike. Like brands are people too. For, for today, even more than ever. All right, you see all these influencers with millions of followers, artists, athletes. I mean, we just signed a contract with Paradigm Sports Agency, who has all these badass athletes and each of their brands, whether they were has-beens or are today athletes, they have communities, just like artists do, you know? So it's about being able to help them tap into Web3 by developing, let's just say an NFT collection, okay? That uh, their community can have ownership in, and then the utilities and experiences that those artists can create with their community, all right? And it kind of will bring their community closer to them to feel like more of a personal, you know, uh, uh, personal touch through, through a digital, it was interesting that I find in the music side, social media made it so people, like, I remember the analog days, when a fan, you make one fan at a time, that's what we say, right? Yeah. Like one fan at a time, usually that's touring or something. And social media kind of made it so fans became numbers. And I've worked with young artists and they have no clue who their fans they are. are. They yeah. don't know how many fans they have, but they have no clue who they are. And this is kind of now bringing it back to that, where the fans are coming in again, being part of something exactly. at an elevated level of what we could do 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. so, so like I said, the, these brands or these people, these artists already have existing communities, you know? But now they're able to build a community within that community of their raving loyal fans. I'd like to talk to you after. Okay, cool, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Right here? Last question. Uh, Jason, yeah, and this is, I lied before, this is actually the last question. Thank you. Okay. For Web3 born companies and brands, how do you create cash flow and other streams of revenue outside of mints and royalties? It's, it's a good question. Um, it depends on what type of Web3 like project you're doing. There's so many different kinds, but um, if it's like something like Fame Lady Squad, and it's like we'll do collaborations. It's like you know brands, the like companies know how to, how to license, uh, you know, pay for stuff like that. Um, I don't know, what, it, what do you think, Matt, or Calvin? No, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome question. Um, I, I think you've answered it well. I mean, you have the CFO of like one of the, uh, you know, one of the companies doing this. Uh, I think that's a great answer. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hijack for just a second and say, I didn't answer your question with something that I think I should have about, um, so apologies, you can hit the CFO up for more on that one after. But, you know, it's not just the big companies making the handshakes, the artifact community itself is is taking things into their own hands by using the 3D files and, and taking them places and doing things with them. So like, if the big companies don't come along on some of those things, I like that the creative communities themselves are, are, are doing it. And I think that's part of the ethos of Web3 too, right? So apologies for missing that before I wanted to share that and and we'll get the uh, yeah, the, the there's, CFOs there's together. different ways depends on what you're talking about if you're creating value you're creating like people like it like there is a market in different ways but we, we can talk specifically you have anything okay. else Calvin we're all okay. good good all right well thanks you thanks everyone for sharing your time and insights with us give them give all these people a follow thank you guys